Praise the Lord. Hey, viewers, thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible uh, Faith Center. My name is Pastor Greg Marilla. It's a very honor, it's a privilege when the Lord allows me to uh, get behind the pulpit and uh, be used as an instrument to impart to you and to us here at Seeing the Impossible. Praise God. Uh, we started a series. The name of the series is uh, Learn to Trust in the Lord. Praise God. And uh, what I'd like to do is before we start, let's, um, let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Bow our heads and close our eyes. And uh, we normally, and I would like you to do that, put your mind and your heart on the Lord, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Father God, we come before you and we thank you in the name of your son, Jesus. We thank you for his word, which is Jesus. He gives, his word gives us instructions and sets our mind on the way it should be. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us and teaching us uh, the power of choice, and each day I can choose either who I'm going to serve, you or myself. Father God, I thank you for giving us the helmet, the helmet of hope, and the helmet of salvation. Father God, thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit here on earth to guide us into all truth and deliver us from all lie of the evil one. Father God, I pray this prayer in the name of your son Jesus and with all the people here, we come in agreement by saying amen, amen and amen, amen. And we uh, always give God a wonderful praise or a clap hand. <laughs> praise the Lord. And then we surrender to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, in my meditation time today, the Lord uh, gave me a, a scripture. And you find that scripture in... Uh, John, John chapter 8, please, John chapter 8, John chapter 8, and um, go to John chapter 8, please, amen, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 12. Okay? All right. Wonderful. I'm almost there. In the book of John, chapter 8, uh, verse 12, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Praise the Lord. That's the New Living Translation. And... Uh, New King James verse 12 once again verse 12 he said be patient because it's very temperamental today um, in verse 12 Jesus said to to them, saying, I am the light. I want you to get that in your heart right now. I want you to receive that. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Then the Lord, the Spirit of God, as I was meditating, brought to my attention that 
Many of us have secrets that we're ashamed of. Things we've said, things we've done, things that we might be doing, I don't know. But he said to me, if you want to overcome those secrets, what you do is bring it to the light. And when you bring secrets to the light, the enemy no longer has power over you. When you bring those secrets, those, those mistakes that we have done or said, we bring it to the light that takes the power away from the enemy. When you bring the secrets to the light, the enemy no longer has power over you. And Jesus, as the light of the world, now holds all power. Praise the Lord. Now, either you're going to be in the power of darkness. It's a choice you're making. You've you got to stop finding fault to everything in your life. Stop it. You have to go forward. What you did yesterday, if you do it today, is not going to be the same. Okay? It's not going to be the same because every day is a new day. All right? So the first thing we need to do is bring whatever is bothering us to the light. If you're taking notes, write that down. Secrets, mistakes, doubt, unbelief. Whatever's coming against you, bring it to the light. And the enemy no longer has power over you. Because you're recognizing light and not darkness. And Jesus, who is light, holds all power, right? Okay. One of the powers that Jesus holds is called the power of love. Write that down. The power of love. The light holds all power. The light, if you follow the light, it will lead you into life. So this light has all power. One power is the power of love. Another power it has, the power of mercy. The power of healing. And if you follow the light, you will not walk in brokenness, but you will walk in healing. And that healing has been poured greatly into your life. It's within you. Listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. Your healing is within you. <clears throat> Okay? So, if healing is within me, right? All right, good. Then I need some scriptures right now, and we're going to do that to get that healing out of us. Now, one of the scriptures that really touches my heart is a scripture he gave me, Matthew 10, 26. Go there. Go to Matthew 10, 26, please. Matthew 10, 26, right?
Matthew 10, 26. In Matthew 10, 26, he says, But don't be afraid, listen to that, of those who threaten you. For the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed, and all that is, and all that is secret will be made known to all. And then he goes on in verse 27 saying, What I tell you now in darkness shout abroad when daybreak comes, when the light comes. What I whisper in your ears shout from the housetop for all to hear. That's the word of God. Verse 28, please. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Hmm. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Praise the Lord. All right. So the light is speaking to us and he has given us what we need so that we can receive and walk in the light and get out of darkness. Okay? Now, in Romans uh, 2.16, go to Romans 2.16. In Romans 2.16, he says, In the day when God will judge the secret of man by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. And this is the message I proclaim, that the day is coming when God through Christ Jesus will judge everyone's secret life. So, if we think that we're hiding something from him, we are greatly mistaken. <laughs> there ain't nothing we can hide from him. He knows our heart. He knows how many hair we have in our head. Yeah, even when I don't shave. <laughs> he knows exactly what you're going to say before you say it. And he also know that we have a situation called bitterness. And we're always bitter when we are in darkness. You can't be bitter in the light. Can't be bitter. Go to Ecclesiastic. Let me go, let me go there. Ecclesiastic chapter 12. Ecclesiastic chapter 12. Verse 14. In Ecclesiastic 12:14, the word of God is read like this: God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. Thank you, Father God. So what is, it, what is that that I'm doing that is not right? Could it be my judging? Could it be my conduct when no one is around? What I'm saying, what I'm thinking? Ecclesiastic 12, 14. God will judge us for everything, for everything, for everything. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. 
What is it that he's trying to tell us? What is it that we're doing that is not bringing him pleasure? And he wants to correct us because God corrects those he loves. And you know what your flesh says? Man, I'm always getting corrected. That's right. That's what, that's what God calls crucifying the flesh. Your flesh is nasty. Your flesh, if you live by your flesh, you're never going to get into that place that we're all seeking to get into. <clears throat> so <clears throat> God corrects those he loves. The same way he celebrates you in the, when we do right, and you know that because you feel right, you know? He's also going to correct you. Um, there was a, a statement the Lord allowed me to say Sunday. And it was, if we keep God first, this is how I can stay out of that place of secret. If we keep God first in our lives, everything else will line up properly in our life. So I got to realize when I'm right and when I'm wrong. Okay? So, Ecclesiastic 12, 14 explains. Now, Mark chapter 4, verse 22. Go to Mark 4, 22. Mark chapter 4, verse 22. <clears throat> Mark 4. Mark 4, Mark 4, 22. Okay? Mark 4, 22 says, For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed. We, we feel like God only sees us when we're in church. Or in trouble. That's right, Brother Harry. <clears throat> His eyes are always on us. For there is nothing hidden which, we, which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. And remember what we said, when we bring it to light, we expose it. When we bring whatever we're doing, family, when we bring whatever we're doing, and, and some of us don't have understanding that we're doing it. I, I've been, oh my God, it's, it's been like this week. People, a lot of people around me, uh, they feel they don't do anything incorrectly. And, you know, they'll just say, you know, I'll say something to them. And either, I know what they think. They say, this guy's always correcting. Well, yeah, I'm a leader. That's what leaders do. But guess who corrects me the most? Because I'm always on stage. If God gives you a position of leadership, you're always on stage. You, you have a 24-7 soapbox. And you get on top of the soapbox and talk. And, and represent. Now, people don't say anything good about you when you're doing good, but do something wrong. See how fast it, gets, it spreads. <clears throat> for there is nothing hidden. For there is nothing hidden which, not will, which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret. Not from God. But that, is, but that it should come to light. And then he goes in verse 23 saying, If anyone has an ear to hear, let him hear. Because a lot of us have ears where we don't hear. Because we have selective hearing. We hear what we want to hear. Or we just like listening to ourselves speak so that we can feel important. And that's why it's important to commit yourself to become a disciple, a student. To be a teacher, you must be a disciple first. Yeah. Yeah. 
There you go. Amen. Amen. Well said. That's why it's important between a husband and wife, Brother Harry, to keep God first. Let's put God first. If we put God first in our life, everything else will line up properly in our life. So, you know, you serve God together, but, you know, ask God for direction. That's why I love Proverbs 3. Go to Proverbs 3, please. Go back to Proverbs 3. Remember we did that Sunday? Go to Proverbs 3. This is very important. Proverbs 3. Please, please, please. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. 3, 5, and 6. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Paths. Not one path. Path. Then I asked you a question Sunday and I'll ask it again. How often do you think of yourself first and then maybe later, at some point, give a passing thought to God. <laughs> you know, we're, we're so um, habitual in things, and we don't even realize it. No, 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 there's a certain way. I do this a certain way, you know. We're not, we're not willing to try anything new. I heard a great man of God say, don't complain about what you're tolerating. If you're tolerating, don't do something about it. And then sometimes you give advice, and then you, you hear the person give you excuses. I give you advice, you give me excuses. That's not a fair trade. You don't have to say amen, but I'm going to say amen to that one. That's not a fair trade. You know, you don't have a solution. I'm trying to give you a solution. And to every solution I give you, um, you have a but for it. You know, but this, but that, but that. Why? Because we don't like following instructions. So that's why. If we can't follow instruction here on earth, how are we going to follow supernatural instruction from God's word? That's why our minds is not set right. And instead, we allow every thought run our mind crazy and we make a mock out of things. Because we're not really... It's my way. That's it. You know, so I love that Joshua 24, 15. Can you go there, please? Joshua 24, 15. You know it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. There'll be a line around the world. <laughs> You're right. Because once again, we trust in the material things and we don't trust in the spiritual things. When he says trust in the Lord, that means for everything. And when he says with all your heart, he's talking about your spirit man. Anytime the Bible talks about the heart, Brother Harry, he's talking about your spirit man. And then it says lean not on your own understanding. And when it talks about understanding, when you see the word understanding in the Bible, it's talking about your mind, your mindset, the way you think, your mindset. So you're right, Harry. If it has to deal with money, people want, they're there to receive it. Gimme, give gimme. Give My name is Jimmy. I'll take all your gimmies. See what I mean? But when it's, you know, sound advice, which will bring whatever has you in chain and darkness to the light, because in the light is going to be exposed. You know? Right. Plenty. That's right. And they'll take the 20 and might even throw away the track. All right? You know, because once again, they choose. And people have to be taught to choose correctly. That's why we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, uh, Pastor V, what you said? Can't clean the fish, right? Yeah. 
Imagine even catch it. If it wasn't for the grace of God, you know. I mean, look at this man, the man that went on with the Lord. I'm going, I'm going somewhere else. Yeah. Well, Billy Graham. Billy Graham, you can't say, and I respect him with all my heart, he's, but his, his, his messages were so simple. But he had the grace for it. God gave him grace. Oh, and as I've read things and uh, books about him and, and, and read about protégés of his, he was a master planner. Before he goes to a city to evangelize, his team will work that city anywhere from three to two years, maybe even more, with the pastors. So when he went to a stadium, let's say to the Bronx Yankee Stadium, he already had a team evangelizing in 2020. Evangelist Billy, Billy Graham is coming, him and his crusade. See? So... We need wisdom, praise the Lord. Wisdom is the principal thing. We can't keep living the way my father used to say, you think the moon is made out of cheese and you can eat it with bread? I know I understand what it meant, but, but I understand now. You know, we, we, we can't see no further than our nose. Without wisdom, wisdom is the word of God, by the way. Wisdom is the word of God, by the way. Wisdom, without wisdom, we have nothing. That's why he says in Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom in all you're getting. Get understanding. So when you have understanding of over a matter, you won't criticize it. You won't condemn it. You'll, you'll, you'll figure out a solution. All right. Go to John chapter 8. Let's get stay back in the, in the teaching. Ch John chapter 8 and go to verse 12. Remember that one? Okay. You there? Thank you. Then Jesus spoke to them, saying, <laughs> what he said. What he said. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Sometimes, I feel it's just plain old laziness. If you have the Lord in your heart, how are you not going to get into his presence? How are you not going to be his student? Please, I don't know about you, but when I get into his word, it fills me up with joy. I feel so free. I feel like, oh my God, I have understanding now. So a lot of time we are slack. We're idle, we're slothful. And you know what laziness is? A form of neglect. We neglect things for no reason. Especially our responsibility. Very little diligence. And let me tell you something, that laziness is a form of selfishness. Selfishness. We have to become selfless to be able really to serve God. A lot of people don't want to be inconvenienced to serve God. A lot of people don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to hear the word. I don't want to, okay, why? Whatever. You choose this day. Joshua 24, 15. You choose this day. Joshua 24, 15, please. Joshua 24, 15. You choose this day. Who are you going to serve? If you think serving God is evil, then okay. Let's go there to Joshua, please. Joshua 24, just laziness. The book of Joshua, right after Deuteronomy, Joshua 24, verse 15.
And the New King James says, Now therefore, fear the Lord. In other words, respect him. It doesn't say be afraid of the Lord. Fear the Lord. Respect him. And serve him. I'm on 14 right now. And serve him in sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your fathers. And put away the gods which your fathers. The things that we've learned. You know what we are? Professional complainers. Com professional murmurers. Professional um, idol talkers. Slackers. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt served the Lord. See? So you could be in Egypt and serve the Lord. Remember when I, when I said Sunday? I heard that from the man of God. He said, is it possible that you can be in position in your life but not see no manifestation? I wonder why. I wonder why. Could it be maybe your laziness? Could it be your slack, idle talk, your slothfulness? A neglect of responsibility? Or could it be a form of selfishness? Okay. Verse 15. And if it seems evil to you, verse 15, and if it seems evil, how can it seem evil to you? How can it be bad to serve God and listen to God and get correct by God or by the Holy Spirit or the Word of God? How can that be evil to you to get corrected, to get saved? You're drowning, someone throws a lifesaver and you call it evil? You don't have to say amen, but amen. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Wow. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorite in whose, in whose the land you dwell. In other words, you want to you wanna hold on to the system? You want to serve the system? Go serve the system. We will serve the Lord. Me and my house shall serve the Lord. So it's a matter of you choosing yourself or you choosing God. Either you choose your way or you choose Yahweh. Very simple. The only reason God wants to instruct you and he does, is to set your mind right, to get you right, to get you right. You have a choice to make. Every day you have a choice to make. Every day, every morning, when you wake up, will it be myself? Should I continue dealing with my laziness, my lack of diligence? My neglect of responsibility, my form of selfishness, because selfishness teaches you how to serve your own desire. I'm signed doing that. I'm not going to do that. I don't desire that. And then you wonder why you get angry. Well, when you don't meet your desire, guess what happens? Anger. Wakes up. Anger comes out. I should have had that. I should that should have been me. We don't care about the interests of others. We don't care about the consequence of the future. How can I change this, Pastor? Well, let's go to the let's go um, contrary to laziness. 
What is contrary to laziness? That's right, that's good. Let's say faithfulness. And let's call it diligence good work. Amen? So now put on faithfulness and good work. What does laziness always tell you in your ears? I don't want to do that. <laughs> I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what I'm supposed to do. I don't want to do that. I'll do whatever I want to do. Ain't nobody telling me what to do. Wow. All right. Go to Romans. Go to Romans. Romans, please. Romans chapter 8. We need Romans so much right now. (laughs) Romans chapter 8. Go to Romans 8, please. In the book of Romans, we'll read 1 through 14 so we can get some medicine to help us out. So Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. Your mindset. Flesh is mindset. Who do not walk according to the mindset, but according to the Spirit. The Word of God is the Spirit. The words I speak to you are spirit and life, and will keep you in the light. Praise the Lord. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made you and I free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, through your mindset, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin... He condemns sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the mindset, the flesh, but according to the spirit, according to the word. Once again, I heard that wonderful man of God said, if you learn to walk in the word, you will see the manifestation and the prosperity of the word. But you got to learn how to walk in it. You, you can't, you can't, you don't have your own opinion in the word. Either it's God, you choose either God or yourself. And a lot of us, we choose ourself, our own opinion. We're too smart. We know more than God. And then verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7, please. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's always, your mind is always fighting, fighting the Spirit. Your mind is always fighting the Word. That's it. For it is not subject to the law of God. It can't submit. It will never submit. Look, there's a fight going on. You against the Word. The Word eventually and will and has already won. And you will see that in your life, in your chapter. Nor indeed can it be. So then, verse 8, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you have your own mindset, how are you going to please God? Because whatever God says don't matter to you. You already have your mind made up. You know more. You were there when he was creating the earth. You were there when he gave light to the universe, to the, to the earth. You were there when he created the trees, the oxygen, the plants, the animal. You were there. You were telling him how to do it. You were the architect. He was the foreman. Get real. But you're not in the flesh, verse 9, 
but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. Verse 10. If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit who dwells in you. Then he goes on saying sonship through the spirit. We got sonship through the spirit. Verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. You don't owe none to your mind. You owe it to God. For if you live according to the mindset, your flesh, you will die. But if you live, but if you by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And then he says in verse 14, the key here, we have a choice to make. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. Praise the Lord. And if you want to put the icing on the cake, verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage to go back to that junk <coughs> again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, Adonai. All right? Two forces constantly fighting each other. So you are not free if you are in your own mindset. When you're directed by the Spirit, you're not under the obligation to the flesh. You hear that? When you're directed by the Spirit, and now you're not subject to that. See? What looks impossible, what looks impossible can become possible. This is, my, this is my breakthrough today. But you know what happens to us? When we don't meet our desire, we get discouraged because we're still in the flesh. Instead of saying, okay. Uh, I heard uh, Kenneth Copeland uh, testify that his mother used to say to him, this is the day that Jesus is coming back. <laughs> and one day Kenneth Copeland told him, Mom, every day you say Jesus is coming back. And you know what she said? She looked right in his eyes. Didn't even argue, didn't discuss anything, just said, this is the day Jesus is coming back. Praise the Lord, somebody. I love that kind of faith. That's faith that, that moves mountains. Okay, you ain't going you ain't gonna change her faith or manipulate her faith. Praise the Lord. All right, I'm gonna talk to uh, the viewers. I want to thank them so much for uh, uh, listening and hearing and. Uh, <coughs> And watching the videos, praise the Lord. Uh, once again, you have a spirit of adoption. You have not received the spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption. You're free to Christ Jesus. Amen. And we'll see you real soon. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.